Hey everyone, it's Megan Elizabeth and Britt and Lynn from AboveRubyStudio.com and we are here with a absolutely fabulous class on custom jewelry making. Britton is the jewelry making expert queen. I don't know, she's taught me so much about jewelry making and I'm really excited she's here, so thank you for coming Britton. Thank you for having me. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We put together a fun little kit. We kind of have limited supplies on this, but if you were lucky enough to receive one of our kits that we put together, I'm going to go through really quick everything that we put together and then the additional supplies that you're going to need to create, well, we're going to do at least seven pieces of jewelry, but we're going to surprise you, I'm pretty sure, with a lot more. I think so. I think so too. Yeah. All right. So let's get started with what's in the kit. The first thing, the most important thing that I think you need to know about that's included in your jewelry making kit is a little tube of E6000. This is super, super, super strong, beyond industrial strength liquid adhesive. Um, you can use it for a lot of different things, but it does work really well with like the mixed media, the metals, the... Um, bales and all the things that go along with jewelry Especially making. Especially with the metal, yes. Yeah. yeah. And the glass pieces too. Yes. It works really well to hold everything together perfectly. So you get a little tiny tube of this. This isn't the cheapest adhesive available no, on the no, market. No, it's definitely not. Um, and a little bit does go a long way. So use it sparingly and we'll show you this through the whole thing. But this should do, well first of all it should do everything that's included in your kit and then some. And more, yes. So just use it sparingly be careful with how you use it. The second thing we have is a really cute domino game piece, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. I have several different things that I'm going to show you, so you can go out and purchase other dominoes to make other sets of jewelry. But we they're really, really, they're pretty inexpensive. Yeah, they're very inexpensive. You can buy a full set, 28, I think 28 pieces come in a domino set, right? Or is it 26? You don't I really have know. no idea. Uh, well, anyway, you can get them at Walmart for like $3, so you can make them for everybody you know for Christmas. And I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques for getting personalized ones, stamped on ones, paper, rub-ons. We have a lot of different things to show you. Yes. So we're going to have fun with these. We also have bottle caps. Bottle cap jewelry is beyond trendy right now, really popular. The cool thing about what's in this kit, we have some painted ones. They're painted white bottle caps, which is a little bit different and unique. But this is really, this makes jewelry making a lot easier, especially for you, the beginners out there. Right. I wasn't exactly sure how to flatten. Britton does a great tutorial. She always shows cut, flattening your bottle caps in her cuddle bug machine. But these are already flattened, have a hole and a jump ring already in them. And you get two of those in your kit. So that's really great. Yes. Um, why don't you go ahead and show some of the other things that we have included as well. Well, a couple of the other things that we picked out for this kit, um, we picked out two separate kinds of ring blanks, which you're not going to be able to see from all the way back there. We'll show you a little bit. We'll show you up close, up close. in a little bit. But one is a fancier kind of filigree, and one is a just a plainer silver ring blank. So we're going to show you a couple different ways, uh, a couple different things that you can put on these ring blanks to really make your own custom rings. Yeah. Um, we're going to do um, a, a set of earrings, and um, also that's in the kit that I'm actually going to show you how to use on the earrings are, they're called resin flowers. Um, you can see them a lot in scrapbooking now. Um, they, before they were called resin flowers, they were called cabochons, and a lot of people still call um, them cabochons, cabochons yes. but it's kind of a mouthful and don't ask me to spell it. Yeah. So when you see them in scrapbooking, they're usually called resin flowers. So we have a couple of those in the kit, and like I said, we're going to make some earrings with those. You can also attach them to rings, but yeah. we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, and also kind of the, 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 what in jewelry making you call the findings, which are the like the fish hook, the wires for the earrings, the yep. jump rings, the bales that you attach. These little those little tiny pieces hey, that when you are go into the craft store, usually there's a bag or there's a sign that says jewelry findings and that's what that's what they're talking about. Those little kind of incidentals that go along with with yeah. making jewelry. So you're gonna get at least three little blank bales that are great. You can string ribbon through them, you can string um, Ball chain. Ball chain through and yes. just, you know, any kind any of jewelry kind of chain, chain right. right through. And then we also have, well, like she said, the earring hooks. You'll get a set of earring hooks and then a bunch of the uh, O-wire jump rings. Yes. And then we also have the little uh, square plate tray, which has the coordinating glass bubble glass that goes tile. right, glass mm -hmm. tile that goes right over top of it. Yes. So that's really exciting. We're going to do a lot of different things with this and we just want to kind of jump in and get started. We really wanted to do this class because we felt like, well at least for me personally, I like making gifts. I have a seven-year-old stepdaughter and I just made her a bunch of things um, for her birthday. I try to make her something every year for her birthday or Christmas or whatever it is. 
I haven't always been successful at that, you know. But we have kids, and like my, my daughter Genevieve is spelled with a J instead of a G, and that's all kinds of confusing. And I have two girls with unusual unusual names. names. So and I I made smash bottle cap uh, pendants for the little girls for the um, for their birthday. Yeah, their birthday, and stamped an initial in the middle. Yeah. and really simple, but the girls really liked it. Yeah, and they're just really great. They're really great gifts, and they're a great way. Like you can sell these on Etsy. You can do so many different things with them that craft I think, fairs. Yeah, craft fairs. Yes. And I think you're really going to find that once you get in the groove and you get started, you're going to realize how simple they are. You're going to become quickly addicted to these. And that's what we really want to have happen in, in many ways. And Go you're going to you're gonna find that the way I got into this was I, was already, I used the supplies I already had. So I had yes. scrapbooking supplies, and I just sort of kind of went over yeah crossed over into the jewelry making so yes. I was really using a lot of stuff that I already that I already had like I said you pick up some findings and really you're, you're good to go right right so that's why we really tried to put this kit together even though we we included like an extra you know domino tile or bottle caps that you may or may not have these were I felt like a little unique and different we sourced these and when I found these I was pretty excited the little um, flattened with the jump ring already on them. So we really got you the basics for what you need to get started with jewelry making and we even got you the jewelry making adhesive ready to go. A few other things that you're going to need and you're going to be want to be aware of. Um, you also get sparkle lights in this kit oh, yes, which is really true. exciting. We do have that's sparkle true. lights that are coming in this kit as well. Um, I'm just going to clean this up and I want to tell you we're going to talk a little bit about the extra things you're going to need. You're going to need some other adhesives, maybe like a sealant adhesive, but you don't have to go crazy and I'm sure many of you already have this in your craft room or craft supply stores at home so you don't have to go crazy about it. But we're going to talk about alternatives as well. The one thing that Britton and I both like to use a lot in our jewelry making, especially if we're doing paper craft jewelry, in other words we cut out, for example, cut out just a shape from anything in paper. This is just a star cut out in paper and Britton just attached one of the bales to it. And all she did was coat it in Mod Podge to seal it. Right. So Mod Podge is all that you really need to seal some kind of paper craft jewelry. It's that it's that simple. Right. You're it not really want to shower in it or bathe in it or swim no. in it. But like most it'll, costume jewelry you wouldn't. But yes, it'll protect it from everyday wear. Everyday yes. wear. So Mod Podge is really the number one thing you're gonna want to have yes. on hand ready to go. Two other things that I like to use, um, one is, this is kind of like one of the more harder, more difficult things to find. If you Google it, you can find it online, I know. It's called 3D Galaxy Gloss, rather, and it's distributed by Tesler Stamp Company, so you can Google them and check them out. But this is a really great little dimensional glaze that dries very quickly, um, and it doesn't seem to bubble a lot. It's acid-free, so you can use it in scrapbooking, and you can use it for a lot of different applications. We'll be showing you how to use this, but it actually has a little brush uh, applicator. Very cool. That makes it so, so easy. easy. So easy. And you right. just need a thin little amount and it actually kind of, I don't want to say domes up, but it does kind of rise a little bit. It's not like a flat smooth finish, which like Mod Podge is like a right. flat smooth yes. finish. And then the other thing is the Viva Decor Glass Effect Gel. You're pretty, most scrapbookers are pretty familiar with Glossy Accents, which is a Ranger product. This is very similar to that, but it dries in a third of the time, I would say. Yeah. There's also many different colors available. For example, I have olive here. There's also a crimson. Um, clear is the most popular, crystal clear. It can, if you do too thick of a coat, it can tend to like crack or buckle if you try to like, say we tried to fill up the tray with nothing but Viva. Okay. Or fill up a bottle cap with nothing but glass effect gel, it would crack. Okay. It gives a cool effect, but it would kind of crack. But it's okay. really, really a great thing to use. The other things that you're going to find that I think you're going to want to have on hand and need is a good pair of scissors, sharp pair of scissors, yes. something that you can cut out paper with really well. I like my Tim Holtz tonic shears. I feel like I can get great detail with these. Um, I think it's just because of the bigger handles. Yes, I do like those. It has a yes. great serrated tip, and I don't know. There's just something about these that I really like. Even though you wouldn't think, like you would think these would get more intricate yeah. or whatever, I feel like I get more precision from these. So yes. either way, whatever you're comfortable using, I just want to give a shout out to them. We're also using some just basic pliers, right? I mean, they're, these are jewelry pliers, but yes, they're like I don't know if they're needle, needle nose. nose, but I got them in the craft section, the jewelry section at Joann's. But you could even sneak out to your husband's toolbox and see if he's got a pair that looks similar to that. Yeah, just so, don't let yeah. him see because I know if anything like any men in my life when I grab like for a hammer or something yeah they you know panic. It, they panic you know like what are we you doing with that? that yeah <laughs> but 
they will come in our scrap room looking for stuff yeah. that they need. Yeah. Honey, do you have something that's a little tiny can get into? You? Yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever. So, yes. Little pair of flyers. Um, I think the last thing you'll need, you'll want some stamps your favorite stamps, smaller stamps, um, alphabet stamps, whatever, to do some of the things that I'm going to be showing, but you're going to need stays on ink. This is a solvent-based ink, and there's not many solvent-based inks out there, and there's a difference. If you watch my 123 stamp DVD, I talk about all the differences in the different inks, but I'm not going to go through all that right now because we're doing jewelry making today, but this is what you're going to need, a solvent-based ink like stays on ink, and it'll work great on your uh, domino pieces. It'll work also on your painted white metal and you can use it on paper too so if you just want one type of ink for everything for everything it really is this is right on there for every surface and yes very true. i I'm use not, it all the time on paper too not trying to do a stays on commercial here no, but, but yeah this is what you're going to need and i think that's about that about covers it i also I have so. some rub-ons that i'm going to be showing and your favorite paper i'm going to be using the bu a lot um fancy pants designs came out with a, a collection of paper called bu and it's my favorite collection right so now out cute. there it really is. It's, it's really cute. It's girly, like it's little girly girly, but at the same whimsical. time it has this whimsical, fun, yeah. mature feel to it as well. It's and cute. it's it has some really great words and sentiments and rub-ons and everything. So yes. the BU collection is the paper I'll be using, and Britain has a few other things. So let's get started, okay? Britton, why don't you go ahead and show us how to use those cabochons on the fish hook earrings. I'm really excited to do this because I've actually not used cabochons and I haven't used bales for earrings before. So I'm really excited to actually even learn myself this part of jewelry making and I know everybody at home is going to want to see this too. So what do we need to do to get started? So everything that you need for these earrings is in the kit. The only extra thing you will need is a pair of needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers. That's it. So I've already completed one here so you can kind of see what we're what we're going for here. So it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Very simple. They're real light, really lightweight. Like my five-year-olds could wear these without a problem. Just awesome. really pretty. So like I said, very simple. You've got everything you need already in your kit. If you haven't opened your E6000 yet, this one's already open, but I'm going to show you. Um, it's going to be sealed. So you want to turn it over and there's the little pierce the little piercer at the end of the cap. So you're going to want to pierce the and just be really careful because it's going to squish out. So one thing I want you to be sure of is that you're using the right, the right bail for the earrings. And you did get two different kinds in your kit. So the one we're going to use for the earrings is completely is completely flat. The other ones, and this is the one I don't want you to use, this is actually the one that you would hook to a pendant necklace. So you can see the hole there where you would put a chain through, where with this flat pendant you wouldn't be able to put a chain through that little tiny hole. So make sure you have, this is like I said, this is the one you want for the pendant. We won't want to use this for the earrings. So we're going to put that aside. So the the completely flat one is the one we're going to use for the earrings. So I'm going to zoom in here, Britton, just so everybody can take a little bit of a better look if you just hold that flat in your palm of your hand again. So everybody can see really good there. That looks great. Okay. So now you can really see that. And you're going to notice there's two sides. There's a flat side and there's a bit of a textured side. And there's actually a reason for this. The textured side is the side you're going to put the glue on because it's just going to help just a little bit, it, you know, make the, the glue adhere a little bit better. So what I would recommend is you take, squeeze your tube just till you get a little dot of the glue. And you're going to apply it directly to that bail. If you squish out a little bit, it's, it's not a big deal. And it's a little bit stringy. So you're going to put your glue on the bale, and then you're going to take your cabochon, your flat back resin flower, and you're just going to place it right there on top of the glue, making sure you can still see the hole at the top because that's where the rest of the earring is going to go through. So you're going to let that dry. Oh, it's only going to take a second because this is very fast drying adhesive. And while that's drying, you're going to take your, your pliers and one of your jump rings, and this is... I don't know how, how, are they going to be able to see this, Meg, on, on camera? It's going to be tiny. Can you lean in a little bit? Can I lean in? Yeah, perfect. Like that? Yep. So you're going to take your jump ring, and these are very pliable, especially when you're using the needle nose, needle nose pliers, and you're just going to separate it. So I hold the one side and then kind of clamp the other one. There's a, an opening there, and you're just going to kind of gently twist your wrist and pry it apart. See, I'll do that again. So there it's closed, and you're just going to gently twist so there's an opening there. And you need that opening there because you're going to put your earring wire through there. 
So something I want to mention real quick is when I first got started with using the jump rings, I was really intimidated. Like I was going to bend it so far out of shape, I wasn't going to be able to use it again. And I was going to break it in half and do all these things. We really did include a lot in the kit for so one. if you bend one out of shape, just pick up a different one. Yeah. And secondly, I thought it was really actually kind of hard. Unless you're really muscling the thing, which you don't need to do, just little movements, you're really not going to have much of a problem. So don't be don't be too intimidated or scared by this. Okay, so once you have your jump ring attached to your earring, you're going to hold it here kind of at the base of the jump ring so the jump ring's kind of not moving. Pick up your cabochon with the bail attached and just slide it over the ring. And then again with the pliers, you're just going to repeat the motion only backwards. You're just going to gently close the ring back up. And it's a little bit more crowded now because you've got the, the bail on, but it still will close pretty easy. And sometimes if I'm having a little bit of trouble, I just kind of take the needle those pliers over both sides and just kind of clamp it. Yeah, you can that way squeeze too. it together. Just kind of yeah. squeeze it together a little bit. And I don't worry too much if it misshapens no, the ring because uh -uh. it doesn't need to be a perfect circle these, to work. These are tiny jump rings, but you want tiny ones for, for earrings. Especially you for wouldn't, earrings. You wouldn't want a large. Like this has a much larger jump ring, which is a lot easier to work with, but it's also on a pendant. So yeah. it's, it's but for an earring, you want a much tinier. So now you have your handmade earrings. And I really, I love these because these, I mean, I'm sure you would find them for, what, $20, $30 in a department store if you went to just pick up a pair of earrings like this for someone. And yeah. you just made them in a matter of, what, five, ten minutes here. Yes. Whipped them out. For a fraction of the cost. Fraction of the price. And they're just a beautiful gift. I could see putting them inside one of the little, you know, in a little earring card with a little handmade cart that you make and pass that along. And, you know, like you said, your girls would love them. I know Genevieve would love them. You can just do so much with them. So, yeah, I think this is awesome. I can't wait to make some other things because we just have so much in store for you guys. I just keep getting so excited. But those earrings are fabulous, and there's so many other things that you can do with them. So let's dive into making a cabochon ring. Okay. So while Britton just made a beautiful pair of cabochon earrings, I know some people out there may not have pierced ears. I was a little intimidated at first trying the dangly earrings, I have to admit, Britton. Um, but she's also encouraged me and to just have the courage to be bold and to go for it and do it. But something that I thought was really cool and really beautiful and simple about these cabochons as well is that you could make ring bases, put them on ring bases on as ring well. Bases, yes. And, you know, it doesn't take much effort at all. And we're going to do this in a few, a matter of a few seconds here, but I just want to give a little something different. We're, there's so many different ideas of what you can use the jewelry bases and the different things that we included in this kit for, but I'm going to actually go ahead and just adhere this right to my ring base. And it's just as simple as what Britton did with the earrings here. However, you know, if you want to make two different rings, if you want to use a cabochon in one of your scrapbook layouts or on a card, because I actually used one on a card. That's oh, why yes. I only have one left. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one left. Britton made the earrings, and I, I still have one left in my kit. So, you know, even though only two come in your kit, you may decide for different things. So really, it's just that tiny little bitty, bitty amount, bitty, bitty, bitty amount of adhesive right on there. It's that E6000 that Britton showed you. And we've been showing throughout, actually. Um, and then you just press this on top, and it's only a few seconds dry time. And it fits perfectly on here. I actually didn't know how that would work at the time of picking out all the materials for this kit. And it turns out, well, at least for me, I like how it worked out really, yeah. really well. Um, the other thing that I thought was really, really cool that I've seen several people do, and feel free to do Go ahead and experiment with this if you feel adventurous and brave. I'm not going to do this for this video, but I have seen people take alcohol inks and color their cabochons with alcohol-based inks. I have not seen that, but that makes sense. And it gives a beautiful, like, marbleized right. look. It's not going to be like a clear, um, solid color change, but it looks beautiful. So if you feel up to experimenting, go for it and have some fun with it. So now I, I have all these rings on today, but now I'm going to go ahead and I have my cabochon ring ready to go. And it just looks so elegant and simple. I just can see, like, I could see my mom, like, loving mm -hmm. this, you know, like, yes. for a Mother's Day present, just making her a quick little cabochon ring and sending it off to her for Mother's Day or her birthday. She would love it. 
So anyway, it's that simple. A few seconds, you're going to wait for it to dry, and this E6000 really does dry super fast, and it's going to last you forever. It's pretty awesome. Yes. Okay, there's so many other things to get to, so let's get down to them.